Hey kid, do you want some? Let's code number 20, valid parenthesis. It's a fun one. I thought about two different ways to come up with a solution to this problem. One is fun, the other is annoying, so you guessed it. We are going to look at the annoying way because I think it holds more value and as a programmer, you will have to solve incomplete and ambiguous problems like this one. And here we will see that completing this problem's description and removing its ambiguity will lead us to a solution. So we are given a string S only containing a bunch of brackets. We got round, curly and square brackets or more commonly known as parentheses, braces and brackets. Our job is to tell if this input string is valid or not. An input string is valid if it follows these three rules. Number one. Open brackets must be closed by the same type of brackets. So an open parenthesis must be closed by a close parenthesis, an open brace by a close brace, and an open bracket by a close bracket. This is what we can see in the examples one and two. In example number three, we have a mismatch. An open parenthesis meets a closed square bracket. So the string is invalid. Before looking at rule number two, let's take a look at the last one. Every closed bracket has a corresponding open bracket of the same type. The important word here is corresponding. I would argue that it is ambiguous, but I'm not going to be annoying and I will tell you what it implies. Corresponding indicates that there is a one-to-one -one relationship. So for every closed bracket, there must be a unique and distinct open bracket. So a closed bracket cannot close multiple open brackets. When it closes one open bracket, it is consumed and cannot be used again. Likewise, when an open bracket is closed, it is consumed and it cannot be reused. So now that we've identified that brackets come in pairs and cannot be reused, we can move on to rule number two. Open brackets must be closed in the correct order. The problem of this description is that they don't actually tell us what the correct order is, but we can guess it by looking at the examples and using common sense. If we look at the examples one and two, the open brackets are seen before the closed ones. So from left to right, we open a bracket and then closes it. We can't do something like this. And if we look at the last example, we have nested brackets. When we have nested brackets, we start by checking the deepest level first and then go back up. But what about this? Nothing says that this is not allowed. But yeah, yeah, it's not allowed. But it can help us understand what the correct order is. The reason why this is not valid is because the closing square bracket tries to close an open parenthesis, which as we can see in example number three is invalid. But why is that the case? Well. A closed bracket closes the first open bracket on its left. Hold up. That's not true. What about this? The closing parenthesis doesn't close the first open bracket on its left. But the second one? Yes, you're right. I'm missing something. In this situation, we start by looking at the first closing bracket, then we look on its left for the first open bracket. Here, because they are matching, we consume both of them. Then we look at the closed parenthesis and we look on its left for the first open bracket that hasn't already been consumed. Understanding this is the key to solve this problem. So let me say that again. A closed bracket closes the first open bracket on its left that hasn't already been consumed or closed if you prefer. So now let's use our new knowledge with this example. Starting from the left, we look for the first closing bracket. Once we find it, we look on its left for the first open bracket that hasn't already been consumed. We check if they are of the same type. If they are, we consume them. We continue with the next closed bracket. We look on its left and find a matching bracket, so we consume them. We keep going with the next closed bracket. We look on its left for the first open bracket that hasn't already been consumed. These two are matching, so we consume them. And we keep going with the next one. We find a matching bracket. We can consume them. Finally, the last closed parenthesis. We find its corresponding open bracket on its left. We consume this pair. And now that we have consumed everything, we know that this string is valid. Let's look at a few more examples. So starting from the left, 
we look for a closed bracket. Then we look on its left for an open bracket that hasn't already been consumed. These two are matching, so we consume them. We keep going. We have a closed bracket, but this time there's nothing left. We have a closed bracket without a corresponding open bracket, so this string is invalid. Let's try with this new example. We found a closed bracket and its corresponding open bracket, so we can consume them. But then we don't have any remaining closed bracket, but we still have an open parenthesis, so this string is invalid. Okay, I think we found a way to identify if a string is valid or not, but how can we implement this solution? So let's go back to this example. We start from the left with the first character of the string, which is an open parenthesis. Our goal is to consume all the brackets in this string. The way we did that previously was by looking at the closed brackets and then looking at the first open bracket that had not already been consumed. So we need to keep track of the open brackets that haven't been closed. So let's store this open parenthesis on the side. And actually, let's do this for every single open bracket we see. Once we reach a closed bracket, we want to get the last open bracket that hasn't been consumed. And this bracket happens to be the last one we stored on the side. So we check if these two have the same type. Here, because they do, we can consume them. So we don't need to store this bracket anymore. If we keep going, we see an open parenthesis. So we store it on the side. We do the same for the brace, then we find a closed bracket. We compare it with the last open bracket we stored. They are matching, so we can get rid of it. We continue with the closed parenthesis. We compare it with the last element we stored. And because they are matching, we can consume it. And we continue with the closed square bracket. We compare it with the last element we store. They are matching. We consume it, and finally, we repeat the operation with the last pair of brackets. And we are done! Okay, so we are reading every character one by one from left to right, and we need to store the open brackets, and if you haven't already figured out which data structure we need to use, let me replay this animation real quick so you can notice the behavior of the data. The last element we add is the first one to be removed. Last in, first out. And the classic data structure that follows this rule is the stack. Okay, let's move on to the code. Let's first define a helper function called match that takes an open and a closed bracket and returns true if they are of the same type. Now for the main function, let's define a stack. In JavaScript, arrays can behave like stacks. Then we need to iterate through the characters of the input string. If the current character is an open bracket, then we add it to the stack. Otherwise, if we see a closed bracket, and if the stack is empty, it means that the closed bracket doesn't have a corresponding open bracket, so we return false. But if the stack isn't empty, then we pop the value on top of the stack, which correspond to the last open bracket we have seen, and we compare it to the current character. If these brackets don't match, then we return false. If they do match, then the for loop keeps going until it either detects an invalid string or once it reached the end of the string. Finally, we just need to check that the stack is empty. If it's empty, then all brackets have been consumed and the string is valid. And that's it! Bingo. Really? Bingo. Bro, I'm making a video! Go away! I'm the knower. Man, I swear this better be important. Hey kid, do you want some crack? Uh, okay. <laughs> Woo! Ew! What's that? JavaScript, Ooh. I'm a cracked engineer. I can only code in C or assembly. Okay, let's restart. Let's define a simple match function. Now inside the main function, let's define a stack. Uh, chat, how do we define a stack in C? Okay, to run a program, the loader creates some memory segments. One is called the stack. 
If there's a stack, I can use it. The stack is modified by functions to store things like arguments, return address, or local variables. So calling a function adds stuff to the stack, returning from the function removes it. So whenever I see an open bracket, I should be able to add it to the stack by calling a function. And if inside this function, I see a new bracket, I should call a function to add it to the stack. And if inside it, I see a new one, I should call a function to add it to the stack. Once I start seeing some closed brackets, I can return from the function. So I should be able to do this using some recursive function. Let's do it. Mm. <laughs> so, it wasn't really easy to come up with, but this works. I'm way too lazy to explain it, but you should probably not do this anyway. However, you should be able to get away with using an array. Or if you really don't care, you can do something fancy and use the input string as a stack. Like, oh, you made this? No, I made this and I fucked it up. Anyway, subscribe, please.